Welcome everyone. How are you doing today? Um, we're gonna give people a few more minutes to jump on or a few more seconds to jump on because we don't want to delay too much. So let's just give people some time to log in, get comfy, and ready to join us. All right, I see some familiar faces coming in. Lots of people jumping on right now. Go ahead and start asking your questions, guys. All right, everyone is almost here, I think. We can just about get ready to start. Let's see. All right, yep, let's go ahead. I think enough people are here. I'm sure more people will join us. All right, so welcome to Eddie Focal Live Pep Talks. Um, my name is Christy Fernandez. I am the principal of Eddie Focal's Pep Academy. Um, I'm new to Eddie Focal, but I'm not new to the business. I have been in education for a little bit over 13 years. Um, I have been in the classroom for a long time. I've taught every grade imaginable. I have also taught Spanish and um, done bilingual education for a few years and jumped right into curriculum design and administration. So I've been a principal now for about three years. Um, and like I said, I'm not new to the business, but I am new to Edifocal. So I hope you guys welcome me and I hope you guys make me feel at home. Well, here's a good question. How are you finding being a part of the Eddie Focal family? Eddie Focal is definitely a family. It's definitely a team. It's definitely somewhere we feel comfortable. But it's a new normal right now for all of us, and we're trying to get used to that. Everything is virtual. Everything is online. Um, and I think it's a direction we should head in and we should get comfortable with. But I still miss that kind of personal face-to-face -to -face touch. So it's a new norm. I'm adjusting to it. But the team has definitely made me feel at home. And I definitely do feel a part of the family from day one, for sure. Let's see. What else? What are my goals for the academy? Hmm. <laughs> I had to think about this one a little bit. Um, let's see. I like the whole concept of online virtual learning. Like I said, it's a new norm. We have to head in that direction. We're becoming more tech savvy. Our children are becoming more tech savvy. They seem to just pop out and know how to use an iPad. Um, so we definitely have to meet them where they're at. But one of my goals for the academy is for us to take more of a blended learning approach. Um, we want to not just have the online learning, but there's so much that we're missing in a traditional school setting that you can't get online, which is what I want for Eddie Focal. Um, our PEP Academy, my goals are just to have more of a school culture, more fun, um, virtual field trips, uh, lots of blending learning, like I said. We want things like that traditional schools have sports days, um, bake sales, these kind of things. So we just, for me, I want there to be a very blended approach to learning. It's not just about what children learn in a classroom. It's about what they apply to everyday life as well. So these little nuances that are missing from online virtual learning, I think Edifocal is going to attack those head on and we're definitely going to have a more holistic approach to education. What other questions do you guys have? Um, what does Edifocal offer? <laughs> Good question. We offer quite a lot. Um, I can speak specifically to the PEP Academy. We offer um, full daytime classes for grades four to six. Uh, there is a live homework center every afternoon. There are also daily extra lessons. Uh, there is a learning lab, so children can not just learn within the classroom or the constraints of a timetable or a schedule, but they'll also have um, a learning lab there 
with practice quizzes, practice questions, practice sessions, that they can always go in and kind of hone a particular skill that they want. Um, but there's quite a bit that PEP Academy offers. Uh, so it's not just uh, the traditional eight to two classes. We kind of offer a little bit more than that. Any other questions? Let's see. What do I have as a special message to parents? Hmm. Um, parents are very important in a child's education. Parental involvement can change so much for a child. And like I said, teaching doesn't just happen in a classroom. It's not within those four walls. And reality is we don't have those four walls anymore. We're all online and virtual. So learning for me is not just with a teacher. It's with a parent, it's with a guardian, it's with an older sibling, it's with a friend, it's even just among our own, you know, um, classmates. So for me, parents, I want parents to understand that I'm a partner in your child's education. I'm not going to be the one solely delivering lessons. I mean, yes, there are topics we have to cover and things we have to do because of PEP and NSC and all of that, but there's so much more to learning than what's within those constraints of a classroom. So parents, I definitely want you to feel comfortable in reaching out to me. Um, I want you to understand that I'm a partner in your child's education or teachers are partners in your child's education. And we want to um, enhance the quality of the education that we're giving to our children now. So moving away from traditional Jamaican schools and kind of revolutionizing everything right now. So parents, definitely, I'm on board with you. I'm a partner and let's get it done. What do I have to say to students? Hmm. Don't get discouraged. Don't ever get discouraged. This is new for all of us. And you guys have the advantage because you could probably teach me how to use my computer better than I could use it. So, but for my students, I really want them to be comfortable. I want them to have fun. I want them to do things that they've never done before or never thought was possible in a school and don't even realize that they're learning. I want learning to be part of an everyday life, not just within the classroom. So for my students, don't ever get discouraged. Um, definitely know that your teacher is, you know, always going to be there for you. Um, if you're having any difficulty or finding anything just a little hard, don't be afraid to say it. I always say there are no stupid questions, only the ones that aren't asked. So definitely make sure that you ask any question that you have, don't be afraid and just have fun. <laughs> All right. So just scrolling through the questions, guys, to make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, what is blended learning? Very good question. Um, so blended learning is a mix of right now what we've been doing since COVID-19 um, is and what Edifocal Pep Academy's focus is, is completely online, completely virtual. There is no interaction. There is no face-to-face. -face. Um, blended learning for us, we are hoping that eventually we will be able to incorporate some face-to-face. -face. So blended learning is an approach of mixing both online and face-to-face. -face. Um, for now, we're keeping things safe and we're staying all online and virtual. But the hope is that we'll eventually be able to do things like field trips in person. We're going to be doing them virtually for a little while. But we'll be able to do things like field trips in person, um, have a couple of classes a week in person, that sort of thing. So blended learning is just a mixed approach between, it's striking the balance between online and face-to-face. -face. Um, let me see here. Oh, Monique is asking if blended learning 
is something we see being implemented in Edifocal's curriculum. Absolutely. It's something we're already in discussion about. It's something we're trying to partner with a lot of agencies. Um, like I mentioned, we do want to do some virtual field trips and we're trying to get people on board with that. It's a little bit of a struggle, um, but we definitely want to have that blended learning approach down the line. Let's see, what other questions? Well, Karen is asking, will PEP Academy be implementing activities that would normally be included in a traditional school setting? So yes, as I said, um, we do want to have that school culture. We want to have that vibe, that feeling, you know, that you belong to a school and you big up Edifocal. Edifocal is my school. You have that sense of pride in your school. And the only way to do that is to have certain things that traditional schools have. So for instance, um, we have several holidays that we celebrate here in Jamaica. And one of them was Heroes Day recently, where we did a Heroes Day celebration. And we talked about our national heroes and what it meant to be Jamaican. And the children learned about traditional Jamaican foods and dress and dance and folklore. So we want to have that still feeling of, you know, belonging, that feeling of pride within your school. Um, sports day is something that we talked about. Definitely we want to have. We're just trying to figure out with all the constraints how we're going to get it done. But that's where our blended learning approach comes in. Um, so yeah, we do definitely want to have a lot of activities that you'd find in a traditional school, for sure. Let's see if I'm getting anything else. Um, who the biggest benefits of enrolling my child in PEP Academy? Hmm. I think one of the biggest benefits for me is, well, it's a couple of things. We have smaller classroom sizes, which means more individual, individualized attention to your child. Um, we have teachers who are so knowledgeable and who are really super great at delivering content. Um, I think those two things are two key factors with Edifocal Pep Academy that are really going to make a difference with your child, for sure. Um, our teachers are amazing. They're good at reaching out to kids. They're good at delivering content that kids can relate to. Um, and having the smaller class size, kids won't get lost. You know, we have more time to, to do that one-on-one. -on -one. So I definitely think those are two of the biggest benefits of enrolling your child in, in PEPA, as we call it, PEPA Academy. <laughs> um, just scrolling through. Let's see. How do you treat in-class discrepancies? Hmm. Okay. Um, we haven't really had too many. But how we would deal with it hypothetically is, or theoretically, is um, the teacher is the first point of contact. The teacher is who is there with the child. Um, we also have a moderator who kind of assists the teacher in more the tech side of things. But the first point of contact is the teacher. And so if there's any in-class discrepancy, the teacher would be the first point of contact. That's who would handle it. Um, Let's say, for instance, it's a behavioral thing and we find that a child is just not engaged and just not talking and just not taking part in class. It would kind of be up to the teacher, reach out to that child, find out why they're not engaging, why they're not participating. Is it they're scared? Is it they're bored? Is it what is it? And whatever it is, it's that teacher's responsibility to kind of reel that child in and get them to be a part of the class. Um, if it's something bigger than just that, and it would need some type of other intervention, the parent could then, the teacher could then reach out to the parent and say, Hey, I noticed that, you know, Casey's not really participating in class. How are we going to address this? She's been telling me she's having mic issues. Um, let's see if we can find some type of resolve. Maybe instead of using her mic, she can type in the chat. 
that sort of thing. So the parent would definitely reach out, the teacher would definitely reach out to the parents. Um, and parents can always reach out to the teachers as well if they're having any issues or any problems. Um, above and beyond that, if it's something major that requires some type of intervention, then obviously, yes, I would come into play. But I trust my staff. I trust um, their decision making. I trust their management skills. I trust them as teachers. And I think they're capable of handling most things before it even gets to me. I'm kind of a last resort. So that's how we would handle in-class discrepancies. Um, oh, someone says, follow up. If my child is having any issues, how would I be able to contact you? Hmm. Um, well, there are several ways. <laughs> There is always, uh, you can contact me through the Edifocal offices. Uh, you can ask a parent to, I mean, a teacher, I'm sorry. You can ask a teacher to um, have me contact you if there's something that you urgently need to speak with me about. Or you can always email me at christy at edifocal.com. That is my email, and that's where you'll be able to reach me. Uh, but anything... You know, don't wait until it's a dire situation and then you reach out to me. I'm always available. I'm always um, open to having conversations, so for sure. But I'm, I'm definitely more readily available by email. All right. Let's see. Oh, Christopher is asking, how many languages do I speak? <laughs> Fluently? Or pretend to speak <laughs> um, fluently I speak Spanish my first degree is in Spanish I have done Spanish education for quite a few years I've taught all levels of Spanish I've traveled to several countries um, I've trained people in Spanish it's my first love I was fluent since the age of 15 and um, it's definitely where my heart is and I do think being bilingual has many benefits um, Given all of my travels, given all of my studies, I do have limited proficiency in a few other languages. So meaning I can ask where the bathroom is and I can ask how to get to the restaurant. Um, I do have limited proficiency in French and Portuguese. And I understand a little bit of Italian, but don't ask me to speak it because I end up sounding Spanish or French. <laughs> But that's it. And then, of course, there's always Patois. Everybody speaks Patois. We know that. And there's English is my first language, of course. Let's see if we have any other questions. Nope. I think that is all the questions that we have. So, all right, guys. So thank you so much for joining in for our Edifocal Live Pep Talk. Again, I am Christy Fernandez. I'm the principal of the Edifocal Pep Academy. Um, you guys can reach out to me via our Edifocal offices, through your teachers, or you can always email me, christy at edifocal.com. Thanks for joining us, guys. Mm -hmm.